right, so last night I was able to get the booster pump uh, completely wired and the front valves wired. There's two zones up there, and I filled the uh, two zones with water, and everything appears to be working. Uh, I haven't tested the booster pump yet. What I want to do first is get my patterns um, in the position I want them, and then once I have my spray patterns set up, then I'll go ahead and check the uh, booster pump, make sure that guy's working. Hopefully it is. If not, I'll have to do some troubleshooting. Um, and then uh, ideally, if everything's working, I can start burying my front. So I'll uh, do a little bit of video once I figure out how to get the patterns um, uh, set in the, how I want them, and I'll show how I'm doing that. Uh, there's plenty of videos on that. I'm using uh, Rainbird pop-ups and uh, in one zone, and Rainbird 5000 series in another zone. So each one of them is a little different. So I'm gonna go mess around with that right now, and then I'll uh, show you some footage once I figure uh, some of that out. And uh, we'll be testing the uh, booster pump most likely today. So pretty excited about that. All right, so um, originally I had shot a video in the yard showing how I set the spray pattern for my gear-driven sprinkler heads. And one of my complaints was when I was looking for videos, I couldn't find a really simple explanation. And I talked, uh, talked through the process out in the yard while I uh, was setting the sprinklers up in my first zone. And then when I went back and rewatched the footage, it was just as confusing as uh, anything I'd seen. And uh, frankly, I confused myself. So I'm going to try again. Uh, I'm not even going to show that footage because it was pretty bad. Um, so I'm going to try again and I uh, drew a diagram and I'm going to explain how the rotor head works first. And I'm hoping that that maybe fills in some of the holes that I couldn't. Um, it took me a while to fill in myself. Let's just put it that way. So uh, I'm going to start doing that now and uh, hopefully this helps somebody who's trying to figure it out. It's really pretty simple once you get your hands on it, but it's still... It seems confusing until you learn it, so maybe I can help uh, shorten the curve. All right, so here it comes. All right, I'm gonna try my best to give you the quick and dirty version of this. The only things you really need are this screwdriver and your sprinkler head, and then you just need to figure out how to set the pattern you want. You're gonna want a pattern from zero to 360 degrees, so there's gonna be some radius, that's a circle. Every circle has a radius, that means half your spraying distance. You need to adjust in this hole here, which is your, that's called your radius reduction screw. And all that means is if you're at a point here and you want to spray out a certain distance, you can play with that screw a little bit to re increase it or uh, decrease the radius by something like 25%. So on a 25 to 38 foot head, if you're at the max, 25% is what, roughly nine feet, something like that. If you're turning it to the maximum uh, and at 25 feet, it would be something like, I don't know, six feet. So anyway, uh, the second thing you're going to be interested in is your hole here, which is your arc adjustment screw. And all the arc adjustment is, is it's literally your degrees that you're turning. So if you wanted a 180 degree radius, which means you're starting at, let's say, where the screwdriver is here and you go around a half circle to here, that's 180, and then you want it to go back. You have to know how to set the head to do that. And that's when I watched Rainbird's uh, videos and I thought they were a little lacking. They were, it, it kind of explains it, but I wasn't sure how to set the left edge because that's what their starting point is. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, so before I show you how to adjust the uh, spray pattern, I want to give context. Uh, that's my nature. I'm an engineer. What can I tell you? So we've already discussed that this is your spray direction, right? So this is the direction it's going to spray. It's going to go like that, whichever way. And my finger's over the spray direction. It's going to go that way, going to go that way. So let's say you have a fence in your yard. And you want to put your head right here in the middle to get full coverage of this area. And you want it to spray from 0 to 180 degree pattern. And then you want it to return. That's all it does. So your left edge is your 0. Your 180 is your right edge. When they say set the left edge, all that means is when this is rotating, because your body is going to stay still, this middle part rotates. So when it's rotating, and right now it's loose, so we have the, that's why I think it's helpful to show it this way, you can see that it'll rotate to here. You want your left edge set so it can't go past that spot. So when just this middle part is rotating, when it hits that spot, it starts rotating back, hits the right edge over here, and then does the same thing. It hits the stop, and then it goes back. 
Now this this uh, particular head goes from zero to 360. You can do 90 degrees, you can do 94 degrees, you can do 120 degrees, whatever whatever you need it for. So it's pretty pretty utilitarian, but setting it seems daunting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go. I'm going to put this in a vice grip, and I'm going to show you because I'm working with one hand. I'm going to show you how to set and find the left edge, and then once you find the left edge, all you do is you use these little the uh, arc adjustment screw here with your handy dandy little screwdriver, and you would to increase your arc wherever it is. If it's only 90, you would want it longer. You just screw to the positive direction, which is this way. And if you want to decrease it, if you're past 180, we're going to go this way. So let's go put that in the uh, vice grips and uh, I'll show you how to do it. And I'll uh, show you where I felt like Rainbird's video was just missing one little detail that would have made it easier to find the left and right edges. Okay, so I got this guy in the vice grip and it's really simple. Right now it's just in some arbitrary uh, angle. I want to set it to 180. So let's pretend we're going to try. This is the fence I showed you on my picture. And the tip of my finger is zero and like my, my monkey knuckle here on the right is uh, 180. So we want to go in this arc. So the first thing we got to do is find the left edge. And the way you do that is you just listen to the gears. The gears make a sound as it's turning. And then when it hits the left edge, there's a noticeable click. I can't keep this thing focused for anything. It's too dark in my garage. So we're going to listen. We're going to hear gears clicking, and then we're going to hear a noticeably louder click. So listen, if I could turn it. So you heard that little click at the end? That's my left edge right there. You don't want to turn past and try to force it, because if you force it, you can break the gears. So this is my left edge. So if I was trying to get 180 here now, my, one, my, my gear would stop at this point and start going back. So all I want to do is I want to take the actual whole body of the gear and turn it so this arrow, when it's on the left edge, edge is pointing that way. And I'm going to do that now and then come back. All right, so I got this guy facing this way, and remember, we want to go 180, so now we have to set the right edge. I have no idea where that is. It's probably, I don't know, I think it's less right now. I was playing around with it. So let's turn it. We're going to listen for the difference between the gear clicking and then when it hits the right edge. So there you go. It just hit the right edge, and the right edge now is uh, I'd say it's about, I don't know, 120 degrees. You start zero this way and you put an angle that way. So what we're going to want to do then is once it hits that right edge, you can't go past it. It would just ro start rotating back to the left edge and it would just go back and forth between this direction and this direction. But we got like 60 degrees of stuff over here we need to water. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it off the edge and take our little screwdriver and put it in our, into our arc adjustment screw. And uh, trying to do that right now, find our little screw in there. And we're going to turn it, uh, looks like clockwise is positive, which positive just means it's increasing the distance. So I'm just going to give it arbitrarily like, I don't know, two, a turn and a half, something like that. I wasn't really paying that much attention. You saw how much I did if you're uh, OCD and want to rewind it and tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. That was two turns. Anyway, we're going to go. We're going to see what we did. So right now we know our left edge is uh, basically along our zero. So now it's going to start going back that way, and we're aiming to get to 180. Went a little too far. So then all we're going to do now is we're going to come off that. So now we're probably at about, I don't know, 250 or something. We're just going to go back in, and we're going to reduce that distance. And we're going to go, I don't know, let's do a turn. And that's just kind of a game of back and forth, rinse and repeat. So we're going to go back to zero again. There we go, we're at our zero, go back, and that's pretty close to 180. But if you missed, you would just increase or decrease until you get it to where you want. And that's pretty much how you set your left and right edges, and now we would have a nice 180 degree spray pattern. If I only wanted 90, I would just decrease it by turning it counterclockwise. I'm doing that with my hand like that makes any sense. You would just keep turning it counterclockwise till you reduce that arc and you know, got your 90 degree angle. So hopefully this helps. Um, I am going to show real quick how the nozzle is uh, put in. Matter of fact, while I have it in the vise, let's just do it. Wasn't planning on it. The nozzle goes in. There's this little hole right here, and you, that's basically put in. You'll feel it slide into a groove. You turn it half a turn. The 
it does is, let's see if we can get this. It just lifts this guy up, and you just pull up, and there's your nozzle. This one doesn't have a nozzle in it. And you would just take that little blue guy, and it, it only fits in one way. You can kind of see there's two little pegs on the little studs at the bottom of the circle. Uh, that that's uh, So it kind of forces it in uh, the only way it can go. And then if you were playing with the, uh, what is that thing called, the uh, radius reduction screw, you would see a little screw come down from what would be 12 o'clock at the top there. So your nozzle goes in there. So all that happens is when this thing pops on, uh, when it's working, this pops up, and then that gear, the, the rotor head, just goes along the spray pattern that I just showed you. So for us, it would just go left to right 180 degrees, back and forth for whatever your timer's set for. All right, for the sake of completeness, I threw a nozzle in there. Uh, this is a three gallon per minute nozzle. There's a little number right at the bottom there. That's the only way this thing can go in. It's literally that simple and all you're doing is popping it in there with your th thumb and if you don't do it far enough it won't close so you just got to keep pushing and it goes in. And then uh, one of the nice things if you don't if you want to keep track of what size you have in a given head because you can do different sizes. They come with this little tab here and the back has a little uh, you can see it's got like a little post with four little ridges on it. I don't know if you can see it that well, but trust me, it does. In any case, I put a three gallon in there, so if I wanted, I could break one of the three gallon tabs off, and I have one there, and that would sit, let's see if I can see it with this lighting. It's not the best in here right now. It would sit in here. There's four little grooves in this little circle below the, uh, the spray direction, and you would just pop it in. I did it on one of them, but then I realized it's just as easy to pull the head up and look if I'm really that curious what's in them. Um, so in any case, uh, that was my uh, guilt at not being fully and uh, completely done with explaining this uh, because I'm OCD and I'm an engineer, and that's uh, how we are. Curse and a blessing. All right, on to the next thing. All right, so now I'm setting one of my pop-ups. These are a little different the way they work. So you've got this little nozzle on the head. And I don't know if you can see it, there's two rings. There's a ring up here, and there's a ring below it. So the top ring, if you rotate it clockwise, it fans out more. So you can see I'm rotating it counterclockwise less, clockwise more. I need it to be 180, but I need it to be 180 facing the other direction. So all I have to do is grip this. I'm not going to do it because I'll get soaked. You just grip it, and I can actually just physically turn it. And it's similar to the other heads where you want to just line up the end I'm going to line it up so it's facing that way, and then I'll turn that ring and fan it out so it's about a 180 here, and uh, that's really all it takes to do those. They're really simple, and I apologize if that's not uh, deep enough or um, in, uh, in not enough information, but uh, it's really easy once you get out here and you start messing with them. You can see how easy they are. So that's it. My finger's in the video. All right, so I've got all my heads positioned and I got my pop-ups the way I want them. I've got my 25 foot gear driven heads the way I want them. So I'm gonna bury everything where I want them. That'll take a while, um, get them all positioned. I haven't tested the booster pump. I want them buried first because I'm worried that I don't know what's gonna happen with the extra pr pressure from the pump and I'm worried that I might damage the heads. I don't know if they'll pop up at all. Um, and truthfully, I can bury the heads because even if uh, I have issues with the booster pump working. It doesn't really affect the heads. The heads are separate. If I have to troubleshoot the booster pump, burying the heads doesn't impact that at all. And I can run, I can run the system without the booster pump. I mean, it just doesn't get quite the distance I might want, but uh, it's still some water, and it'll be way easier than doing it manually with a little garden hose. So, so I'm going to go uh, start burying heads, and then uh, that might take the rest of the day. Uh, we'll see. So anyway. I decided to throw caution to the wind and I'm going to test my system uh, right now. Uh, I'm going to test my second zone because those are pop-up heads and those are about two bucks a head versus the 12 bucks for the gear driven. So if I do any damage, I uh, would rather replace two dollar heads. And the reason I decided to test it, the booster pump, is before I bury the lines, I have to have access to the wiring. If I messed something up in the wiring, I don't want to bury all that. I could bury half the system and test it. I just decided, let's go for it. Um, it's all in the name of science anyway. Do you hear the gentle hum of that beautiful booster pump working as intended? Fantastic. 
Uh, everything's got a little increase in pressure, and I don't think I can really zoom in, but I'm looking, uh, it looks like I'm sitting at about 60 to 70 PSI. It's hard to tell from back here. I don't want to get soaked, so I'm not going in. But uh, everything's working as intended. It is fantastic. A long time coming and a lot of sweat equity. This is an absolute thing of beauty. I have full coverage. I'm about to get soaked. I have full coverage with just my one zone running. I managed to bury all my heads and uh, I'm pretty sure the whole yard is covered with just my 25 footers, uh, which are shooting more like 28 to 30 feet. Um, but I'll still run the 15s and I'll be able to run them a little less. Uh, this is fantastic though, just getting to this point. So my yard, my front yard can be watered on a daily basis now. This is awesome.